Good morning, everyone. So, fun to see so many people here, even though it's Friday and the last day of the conference. So, welcome to this presentation where we'll discuss how we can use the update framework to secure your production delivery systems. So, I'm Fredrik Skogman, I work at Staff Engineer at GitHub. Uh, my team is primarily focusing on supply chain security and artifact integrity, and I'm also very active in the open source community, especially around the update framework and SIG store. Yeah, hello, uh, my name is Cairo. I work at uh, Testify Sec. I'm an open source engineer there, and um, I'm author of uh, repository set for TUF that we will present today here. Um, and also I'm maintaining the Intoto Archivista, and I'm, I'm trying to be very active at uh, the TUF community as well. So we're going to start now. <laughs> so to begin with, uh, I would like to present uh, an inspiring example where the update framework might be something for you. So usually when you think about securing the, the packages from a registry, you might sign at the registry side so the verifier can make sure that the package they are getting from the package is the one expected. But there are a lot of pieces missing there, and I think we too can do better by signing earlier on in the stage. So for instance, we can sign at the time we're building the package. And by doing that, we can also collect a lot of other important metadata about the build, such as which repository did you build from, uh, which git commit, which workflow file did you use, and so on, like what were the actual build instructions. So this is typically called like the build provenance. So it would be preferable if we can sign not just the package, but also the build provenance that describes everything around it and ship that to the registry. And then when you're pulling down the package, you can pull down the, the build provenance as well and, and verify that. But that creates some challenge and challenges in how you're going to manage the signing key in the CIC the system. It's slightly more complicated than just having a registry with a single key. So that's a little bit how I want to talk about it and how the workload identity can be used for that. So for NPM, we fixed this. Um, it was GA'd last year, I think. So when you're building a package with NPM, you can add a flag dash dash provenance and we will automatically collect all the context from the build and create the salsa build provenance with that and sign it together with a, with a package and push it to the registry. And this works very good for open source software because when you are signing with SIGStore, uh, as a consequence of the signing operations, uh, a lot of information about your repository and so on will be put on a public append-only ledger. But if you're using a private package or maybe building some inner source scenario, you may not want to leak that information to a public ledger. So for that, you may want to host a private six store instance, and yeah, what will it take to run one of those? So I'm not going to talk about operating the entire six store because that's a fairly big thing and it's not really relevant. But what I want to focus about is how do you secure the trust route for your six store instance? And the trust route is typically what you would think about metadata describing the services and the certificates, the, the entire certificate chains, the public keys, and so on. And this is a highly secure, or it's a highly critical piece of information, so you need to be very uh, sensitive about how you are protecting this, because if you, for instance, manage to get a certificate chain for your testing environment into the production trust route, you may up, end up in a situation where you can actually verify a test build properly and put it into your production. So you need to have extremely tight access controls for the trust route. So this is kind of similar, you might think, to like managing a trust route for the web PKI, but it's very different. For the web PKI, you have millions of untrusted intermediate certificates and other identities that are floating around that you may need to care about. <clears throat> Assigning a 44 code signing certificate is slightly smaller. The difference, the, the use case is very different. Uh, you usually have much smaller number of certificate chains and you know about them at time and you don't 
change them as often. So it's, it's slightly different from running at web scale. And also the client has to be tightly integrated with a trust route. The client has to be able to learn about new certificates or which certificates are not valid anymore. And preferably the client should be able to verify that everything it got is the expected one. And it should, for instance, be able to detect if no updates can be delivered. So there are some functional aspects here as well that's very different from how you might think of code signing authorities. And the security is also very different, or it's not very different, but it's very important. And it's primarily two things you need to consider, and that is securing um, the delivery of the trust route to the client, and you need to protect the trust route uh, at rest. So there are various attack vectors in here, like you can have an external actor, an internal threats, it could be honest mistakes. But important is that when the trust route is deployed and ready for consumption, it, you have to be able to verify that what's actually being deployed is the expected one. So it can't be tampered with once you have deployed. You, you need to continue and monitor for correctness after it has been deployed by the system. And the same for the client, like, of course, you need to be verify that when you're pulling down the latest trust route, it is also the correct one. And the complete int integrity is held and it actually was approved for deployment. So there are some options we can think about and let's talk a little bit about X509 PKI and how that can help and then we'll dig a little bit more deeper into the update framework. So X509 PKI, it's a known standard, it's been out there for a long time. It's proven to work kind of good, but also have um, features for certificate lifecycle management in terms of various protocols for accessing certificate stores over different APIs. And there are concepts such as certificate revocation list or other online operations to be able to detect what certificates are not valid anymore. The problem is that it can be quite challenging to operate PKI system based on X509. There are many things to consider. It can be hard to work with certificate revocations list because you might get partial updates that you need to combine at the client side to sort of get a view of the complete state. And it's the PKI itself, you, you need to sort of have good controls over what's being deployed and how to secure that. And I think it kind of boils down to, you need to write and operate a lot of custom code to manage such a system. So with that, I would like to introduce the update framework, which is a framework for securing updates over insecure channels. It's used in many systems, such as agent delivery systems, and there are adaptations for the automotive industry. The framework specifies the behavior of the client and the interaction it should perform, and it provides very strong and good security guarantees around the server-side repository. And all this makes it very suitable for managing a trust route. A tough repository consists of a lot of metadata files describing the entire repository, but it also describes all the different artifacts that's going to be delivered to the client. And this is pretty good because it allows you to always provide a complete state to the client, so the client doesn't need to merge files or things like that to understand what's the current state it should operate in. And a very strong guarantee you can get with Tough is that you can have threshold-based signing. So that means that you can designate a team of signers that will be working to approve and endorse any changes to the system. And with threshold-based signing, you can configure in such a way that you can, for instance, require three persons to agree for any update to be delivered. And that mitigates a lot of attacks such as single actor trying to change the content. And those keys that are used to sign off the entire tough route are easy to revoke and rotate in the event of, let's say, a key loss or if some key is compromised. Tough itself also provides a lot of security threat mitigations in the client interaction, and it has a lot of good protections. Two examples would be freeze attack and a rollback attack, where an attacker might prevent a client from getting updates, or the attacker might try to replay an earlier scene response to 
trick the client into entering a state where it's using um, obsolete data. But the strongest thing I want to push for again is that with threshold-based signing, you can have very good confidence that the content you are actually using is the one that was approved for delivery. And with Tough, you also get a good benefit in terms of client implementations. There are a lot of client implementations in different languages for different platforms such as Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. When you think about Tough, you can kind of think of it as your favorite operating system kernel, but you can think about the different repository implementations such as distributions where they tailor, they are tailored for specific needs because depending on your use case, you might have different needs. So there are different implementations out there that focuses on specific areas. Sorry. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about Tough on CI. So Tough on CI is an open source implementation of repository automation. So it's very tailored for a use case where you don't have that much or that many frequent updates and you want to have a good security posture and use hardware security models for all the signing operations. And relying on HSM keys is very good because when it's pin code protected, you enter a security mode where you ha it's something you have and something you know. So it's, it's very strong in protection against threats. Tough on CI works by relying on a Git repository, and when you add content to it, automation kicks in and detects for changes and understands what has to be done to continue to get everything signed and into a working order. So the automation detects that, open up a pull request that guides all the signers through what has to be done by providing comments that says what has to be done. So you can see a simple like, um, simple screenshot where the repository automation says that, yeah, this new update is now signed by the expected signers and we are ready to proceed to publish this. So it's very easy to use. So an overview of how it looks is that you might have a team maintaining the trust, the trust route, the certificates and the content that goes into repository. So when there are a new certificate chain you would like to publish, uh, you would extract it from, let's say, your Clyde K KMS store or whatever it's stored. And then you add it to the repository. The automation detects that there are new content to be delivered. And it so opens a PR and notifies all the different signers that there is an action to be taken. They need to sign off this new change. When the threshold of signers has been reached, the PR is now ready to be merged and the system notifies you that you are now ready to proceed once you merge the PR, automation detects that and prepares an update and stores it on a content delivery network where it can be stored, sorry, where it can be uh, accessed by, by the clients. So to operate a system like this, you typically would, typically would like to have two teams. One team that is maintaining the actual content and prepares all the updates and any tooling that you would like to have around it. Then you would have a designated team of individuals that are designers that verifies and reviews all the changes and endorses that by signing and so acknowledging the update. Uh, when you're dealing with hardware security module or HSM keys, it's very important that you think about the key management and your disaster recovery options or what is happening if a key gets lost, like what's your in incident response. So I won't go much into detail about that, but Cairo will talk a little bit about how you can do it. Because it's very important when you're dealing with a tough, tough repository that you do not lose access to the keys that are used to sign it. Because if, if you're losing too many keys and you can't sign a new update, you're, you're in a bad situation because you may lose access to the trust route. And of course, once you have it up and running, you need to have constant monitoring to make sure that no one is trying to for instance, change the content. So it's always the expected one out there. So to sum it off, uh, operating a tough repository today is not that difficult and there are a lot of tooling out there that can help you to achieve your goals. So if you have a system where you don't have that many frequent updates, Tough on CI is a great tool and I f definitely think you should give it a try. 
If you have a scenario where you have more frequent updates, I will now hand it over to Cairo and he will present how you can use stuff for that. Thank you, Frederick. Um, yeah, I will talk another, uh, for, about another implementation of Tuff, that is um, RStuff. So RStuff is a generic uh, application, and the primary goal was also to make the general Tuff adoption easier. <clears throat> so the project is uh, early adopted by RubyGems and uh, PyPI. Uh, I say early adopted, but it's a work in progress, so we are uh, implementing it together. And the project is under OpenSSF, um, and of course it's a neutral uh, go governance structure, so it's a, a project uh, uh, where everyone is welcome to contribute and uh, help us. Well, um, my talk would be a little bit uh, different because he gave us a lot of uh, uh, concepts about the TUF and uh, how it's important to secure the ways to do this, and uh, I want to going more operations of with uh, TUF. I will give an example of using our stuff um, to secure a self-managed uh, repository. In that case, I, I'm, I will showcase of uh, a JFrog repository and our stuff uh, uh, securing, uh, helping to secure this uh, repository. So this is um, an example from uh, an organization. So let's understand the, the organization problem. So, <clears throat> It's a software um, a company uh, on secure uh, industry. Um, they provide different um, um, artifacts. So they have server application, embedded software, and client uh, application. And they want uh, also to secure the artifact distribution and have a uh, well-defined uh, release process and incident process. So, uh, the, the challenge on this, uh, the first one was to define the release process together with this uh, uh, user and uh, how they will uh, release the internal and external uh, uh, artifacts because they have um, um, artifacts that are used internally and artifacts that to, used to build the product that are shipped to the, the customers. So we need to secure uh, the release process using TUF and integrating it with CI/CD and JFrog. And they want to uh, um, also uh, secure the distribution and they have different uh, use uh, platforms, uh, uh, Linux, uh, Windows, Mac OS. And, and of course, very important to them, it's uh, document the incident uh, response process, what they do if something goes wrong. So <clears throat> the, 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 the uh, organization structure, it's, uh, the process flow, it's the most common that everybody is familiar. Developers uh, push uh, commits to Git, CI CD building uh, and tests, and releasing uh, artifacts to the uh, repository. I want to highlight a bit the repository because there is something here that's interesting because they have a kind of two uh, repositories. One is in, uh, internal repositories when they release the internal uh, libraries and toolings. Uh, that are used to build uh, the product to the customers. And those, sorry, uh, the, the, the products, uh, the installers and the PDAT go to the, uh, a repository that is uh, exposed to, the, to their customers. So, <clears throat> so how they do the internal uh, artifacts? It's uh, important because uh, they release very often. They have more than 200 releases a day of their, uh, their uh, libraries and tools internally, so this is uh, used also by the developers to, um, to change those uh, uh, libraries and tools and uh, also use it in the CI CD. So the internal repository is uh, used uh, uh, in that way. And the external uh, uh, artifacts that are the product, um, they use the, of course they use the internal libraries and tools to build this product and then uh, release it to their uh, artifacts, then it will be uh, shipped to, the, to their customers. So when this is shipped, it's uh, available to the users to uh, download, that's uh, let's say a GA uh, um, uh, release. Well, uh, the solution implemented here uses uh, our stuff, uh, Tuffy, uh, GoTuff, and uh, they are experimenting Tuff.js also. 
This is uh, to, to enumerate uh, how many libraries we have out about Tuff, so it's easy to integrate. So <clears throat> let's see uh, what we did. It's just adding our stuff uh, along to uh, along with uh, JFrog Artifactory in a way that it will be part of the process, but we don't change too much their process. That is uh, good because the impact is low for them. Um, and why our stuff in the self-managed repository? So the first reason is that our stuff, uh, actually tough, it's artifact agnostic. So they have different uh, uh, pr uh, tools and the libraries that they release in different la languages like uh, C++, Java, um, Go, and uh, uh, other uh, languages. It's a uh, it's an artifact agnostic, so uh, Tuff and our stuff or Tuff and CI doesn't care which language you are using. And it's at least a process agnostic, so it's easy to f uh, fit it to the existing process, so we don't change too much uh, the way that they release uh, the, uh, their uh, component. And of course, <clears throat> our stuff can be deployed uh, on private or public cloud and on premises as well. So uh, just a quick introduction about Tuffy because I will use this here to, to show the case as well. They use this to show the case. Tuffy is a, a small uh, generic Tuff client that's uh, written in Go using the Go Tuff. It's another Tuff library. Uh, and it's uh, supported by Mac, Windows, uh, and Linux. And it supports also multiple repositories. So you can configure and use different repositories. I will show it uh, in a quick demo. <clears throat> so how, how was the implementation? So the first uh, thing was uh, the TUF ceremony, um, defining what are the TUF administrators. So they have the CTO, engineering, and release managers involved. And as Frederick mentioned about the root metadata, how it is used there. So they have uh, uh, three uh, um, key owners uh, for the root metadata that signed the root metadata. And they use the online key to, to sign the target metadata that is used by is to store the artifacts. And they have some management uh, process uh, internal, like what happens if the, the, the head of product uh, uh, changes, uh, uh, leaves the organization, they know how to rotate this. So I will describe it more uh, later. And also uh, process for uh, online key. Uh, if the online key, the key MS key rotates, how I update that. So, the second part, it's uh, integrated to the internal um, uh, release uh, where they have the internal artifacts. So how it is done, the process is still the same, but we introduce stuff. So basically the developers uh, ship the uh, uh, push the, the, the code to the, the Git. And uh, when it's the time uh, for those uh, tools and libraries, when they release it, they have the version tag and it will uh, build and add the artifact as, as um, uh, add the artifact in JFrog uh, repository, and also in, in add this information to the TUF metadata using our stuff, uh, using an API call. And, and this will be signed by the key MS key. So, and for the um, product, it's a little uh, difference in the process because the process is not started by uh, the developers. Uh, the process are started by the release and product manager. What they do, they define all the libraries, tools that will be uh, used to build the product uh, in agreement with the, the developer leaders. Then they push the release. Uh, and this uh, use the, the, all the, it pulls all the, the um, from the, the internal artifact the repository, all the, the definitions of uh, libraries and tools that used to build. And when it's built, they create a pre-release and they sign this pre-release with the uh, uh, HSM keys as well, the UB keys. And this is validated by the CI CD and it is uh, released again to the tough metadata. So there is one thing here that you see it's a little bit confused and because it's not what we want with our stuff, actually what want to simplify it. When the product is uh, built, they sign directly the tough metadata. Uh, so we skip a lot of process here. And when it's signed, it will be available to, the, to their users to, to consume it directly. 
So we want to simplify this. This is a, a feature that will be coming soon, the possibility to use uh, offline keys in the target metadata. So that, um, now it's the, the part that is really important is to use the tough client uh, everywhere to secure uh, the, the, the users uh, outside of the organization, the clients, customers, and also secure the developers internally uh, from internal attacks. So um, <clears throat> I want to highlight the internals because I really like the, the solutions that they applied here. First, they have uh, developers, uh, as I said, they de uh, develop different languages and, and toolings and, and, and libraries. So they have uh, Mac OS, Windows, and multi-platform. So, and also in the CI/CD, of course, to build it multi-platform, they have multi-platform, and we need to uh, help them with that. <clears throat> so what they did, uh, that the IT department uh, deploys in our machines the the Tuffy with the trusted root, so they can use this uh, to download the artifact. So. What they, they, they do actually, uh, they did something very interesting for me. I want them to share with us. Um, they create a VS Code extension that is basically a, a package manager for the internals. And when developers want to uh, download some um, uh, library or tool to work, the source code, they, uh, they use the VS Code to, to search and install it. So it's a very interesting solution. I didn't see it yet, but I want. And they use uh, Tuff also in the, when they want to build the product as well. So uh, in the CI CD, they, they uh, use this to download the, the, art, the source code. So um, the product uh, uh, for the clients, it's, uh, the solution is uh, still on, on development, but it's an interesting case. What they do is they create a very light uh, installer that uh, the user can choose what product uh, they are allowed, of course, by license, all the, those uh, um, requisites, but they can choose what they want to install uh, or download, and they use this to, to download, and they are using, in that case, uh, Tuffy, but they, are, they want to change it to, uh, because this application is Java. <clears throat> so, uh, and when they, once they have the product, what they uh, have in that product, they have the updaters that, that it's uh, using uh, Tuff as well. For these, they have different uh, uh, use. They have uh, Tuffy, Go Tuff, and now they are ex experimented uh, Tuff JS as well. They use this, <coughs> excuse me, uh, every time that the user uh, want to update this tool, they use this to, to pull from uh, using the tough metadata and securing that. So um, I, I couldn't have uh, more details from uh, the, the user, direct, the, this, this case directly. So what I did, I wrote, I did a quick um, demo. I did this yesterday and today, just to exemplify how they do this. So here I'm using GitHub and, and uh, JFrog and our stuff as well. So I'm releasing a new version of uh, this demo package. Um, it triggers uh, the CI CD uh, in GitHub, uh, the Git, uh, GitHub Actions. So I approve uh, the release. Once it uh, is uh, approved, uh, it will add the artifact in the JFrog and in the tough metadata. You can see um, to the, the runners that will be uh, very simple API calls for, uh, for our stuff as well. And who is familiar with JFrog, uh, you see next that uh, it's um, a similar, uh, a traditional call that is not changed in the, how you use JFrog Artifactory. So yeah. Uh, I, will, I did also a quick, uh, demo that it, it shows, of course, the artifact in the, uh, in the JFrog, but here I'm using the Tuffy to, I have the repository configured and I will use this to download uh, uh, the artifact. And behind the scenes is using Tuff clients to do all the verification of the metadata before uh, fetching uh, the artifact. Um, yeah, that, that's it for this demo, let's see. 
So last uh, thing that's quite important uh, is uh, uh, the incident response. So how they map this. Of course, this is not their document. It's uh, just an example that I wrote to understand how it uh, could be uh, effective in uh, any organization. So we have some administrative, uh, uh, it's not an, a security incident, but uh, it could uh, go to that direction if not uh, there. But what uh, happens if uh, a root key admin leaves an organization or change the, their role? So they have the, ma the actions that they should do. What if a DevOps uh, member with access with the key MS leaves the organization so they can rotate the root metadata, resign it, and they don't need to go to each uh, uh, client and, and give the new version. It's done by the, the, the tough metadata. So, and also here is a, some uh, a, uh, incident response uh, examples, like what if the key MS key is leaked? Uh, what if the CI CD pi pipelines uh, has some uh, access leaked? What happened is the tough API. So here I create some ideas of how they could uh, do this, but of course each organization is to uh, match it to, to their uh, propose. Yeah, and uh, we are on time and that's it for, for our presentation. Thank you. We have time for questions. I think four minutes is left, so there are microphones somewhere if you would like to ask us something. Hey, so um, I must admit that I have heard Tuff mentioned often, but often skipped it a bit because it seems like, uh, I'm going to say something stupid, the more complicated six store. <laughs> so, so my question is probably a bit, when would you put up a scenario where, yeah, you should, uh, Tuff is the right choice, uh, choice for this and uh, above six door, not as to they want to split up, but more like when to use what? Yeah. Uh, when we, we think about the security supply chain, uh, I would say that the, the tough it's the, if, if you are familiar with the security supply chain, like the salsa uh, graph, it's uh, in the end of your um, supply chain. I mean, when you want to the, uh, distribute any kind of artifact that m needs to be trusted by uh, the users, I think that's the point where you, you should consider to, to have. Okay, well, is nobody else going to uh, ask then, uh, do you also use TOF to sign metadata like uh, SBOMs and stuff like we see with Sixto often? Yeah, it's a good use case, signing the, uh, adding the artifacts of the, the SBOMs in the TOF metadata, it's a way to, to create a trust uh, between the users. If I get your question. Uh, no, uh, in, in six stores, it's very normal to sign uh, S bombs oh, yeah. and stuff, attestations. So is uh, that also a normal thing to do in Tough? Yeah, so for that case, um, in six store, we only use the update framework to actually provide the root certificates and the, pro the, the uh, public keys for the infrastructure. And then via that trust route, you can then use FOLSE, which is a certificate for you. Authority and create a signing certificate that you use to sign your artifacts, such as your S bomb. So you, you wouldn't really use Tough for that in the Sigstore example. So Tough is more like an enabler to provide the trust route to the Sigstore clients, and then they use the rest of the Sigstore infrastructure to create signing certificates to sign what is ever produced in the CI CD pipeline. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, great talk, well done. Um, yeah, just following on from this guy's point, given that it's artifact agnostic, doesn't that mean that um, if I choose to, um, I can secure my um, attestations, SBOMs, uh, that, that sort of stuff with TUF um, without SIGSTOR, is that correct? Yeah, you, you could, you, you have your own trusted uh, root metadata to secure your attestation. Uh, of course, you could use also the, the SIGSTAR to sign your attestations, but you could create another layer of security. Okay, thank you.
I guess we're done. Thanks for coming. Thank you.